Isaiah chapter 52. And we're looking at a great, they're all great chapters. And we're looking at a future chapter on a future event of the complete restoration of the nation of Israel. And what God will do. Awake, awake. That's the second advent. That's Jesus Christ waking up. I know he doesn't sleep, but I mean, it's a term that you're going to get up, you're going to get on that horse, the church is going to get on the horse, and we're going to see the millennium. Put on thy strength, O Zion. You know what the one of the biggest problems, you know, people are mad because I say Baptist Catholic. Is the Baptist church are trying to put America into the Bible and America is not in the Bible. They probably put the nation of America, the greatest nation of all nations, now she'll fall like the rest of them. Zion, Jerusalem, Jews, Hebrews, Israelites, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I mean, there are some people who go to the book of Hebrews. Oh, that's you don't know how to read. Awake, awake, strength of Zion, Jerusalem. Put on thy beautiful garments. Now, would you say today, Jerusalem is a beautiful city? They've been firing missiles. It's a desert land. It's a land that's under the curse. And when Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to remove that curse. We read the other night, that place is going to be like Eden. It's going to be like where Adam and Eve were before the fall. Oh, Jerusalem, the holy city. And they'll say, oh, are you going to go over to the holy city? Not with the Catholics, Arabians, and, and carnal Baptists running around. Where the Catholics will show you, this is where Jesus, this is where Jesus, and the Arabians, well, this is where Jesus, this is where Jesus. Two groups of people that don't and read their study their Bible and reject the Bible. You're going to have someone tell me about the footsteps of Jesus and they disregard the word of God for tradition? I don't think so. It's not a holy city yet. Holy city. We're going to go to the holy city. The dumb of the rock sits where the most holy place sits or sat. Jesus Christ is not seated upon the throne of David yet. It, when he does, then it will be the holy city. But do you have ever plans to go to the holy city? When Jesus Christ takes me. From henceforth there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised, Gentiles, and the unclean. There's going to be no more unclean. Again, you got the Arabians and you got the Catholics running around, and you got Baptists who are unsaved running around. Shake thyself from the dust. And it pictures the city, you know what? You know, like when you, when you give a dog a bath, and, you know, you, you turn off the water and the dog just shakes himself. And shake thyself with thy dust is a complete opposite of the book of Lamentations. It's a city, ah, okay, clean ourselves off. Look presentable for Jesus. And sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. Captivity, O captive daughter of Zion. You know, the funniest thing the Jews ever said in history, when they said a lot of things are funny, but when they told the Roman government, we're under no bondage, they told that to Jesus. You were in bondage to the Roman government. You were in bondage. Of, you were in a, a captivity of Egypt. You were in bondage to Babylon. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourself for naught. They keep selling their land. They, they keep, you know, for a little peace tree, a little peace tree, a little this. We'll, we'll give up this. We'll give up that. Give it, and they get nothing. Realize when Jesus Christ comes and gives that land to Israel, there will be no PLO. That's Israel's land. 
There'll be no United Nations either. They are against Israel. God says, I will curse them that curse you. Now watch this. He shall be redeemed without money. What's that? That's the blood of the Lamb, Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. I, I will write upon their hearts a, a new law. I will, I will, their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. The only way God can do that is by the blood of Jesus Christ. You can't say that right now. The nation is not under the blood of Jesus Christ. As a nation, as a corporate body, Israel has rejected the Messiah. Now, individual Jews can be saved. But as a corporate body in the land, only the blood of Jesus Christ. Without works. Works is the entire law situation. Until Jesus came. For thus saith the Lord God, my people, Israelites, not Americans, went down four times in Egypt to sojourn. Here's history again. Exodus 1.8. Notice how much history we read in the Old Testament. And you got to wonder, is that why Christians don't read their Bible? They're not interested in history? Is that why the, I call the church a, a Baptist Catholic? It, it is an abomination to drive by a Baptist church and see on their signboard, Good Friday. That is an abomination. It's an abomination for a Baptist church to say, oh, Jesus Christ was, bo was born on December 25th. That's an abomination. It's an abomination to have Esther celebrated in your churches. You say, what's Esther? I'm going to leave it to you to figure it out. They went down, sojourn. Sojourn means a temporary dwelling. Sojourn is, you're on the road, it's getting sleepy, you're tired, it's late, we'll go, we'll go up this exit, we'll find a hotel, we're going to go in that hotel or a motel, we're going to sojourn. In other words, we're going to go in, we're going to get a room, maybe one night, two nights, depending on how tired I am. We are not going to live at that hotel. You know, that's what, that's what a Christian is. Christians say, oh, I'm a citizen of America. No, you're a sojourner, you're a pilgrim. Your home is New Jerusalem that you forgot all about. The sojourn is, you're going to stay a couple nights in a hotel, in a motel. Israel's going to stay, I think, 400, 490 years in Egypt, what God told Abraham. And the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now, you find that in Exodus. I don't know how many churches know that it said, and, a, and the king knew not Joseph. And he kept saying, next is one, his people, his people. And the ruler of Egypt that, that, that tormented the nation of Israel was called a high clues, try that for a word, ruler. He, he called Pharaoh, but he's not an Egyptian. He's an Assyrian. And Assyrian's a type of Antichrist. So guess what book is going to play out when the Antichrist comes? The book of Exodus. Without cause. There was no reason for that serving with rigor. Now, therefore, what I have here, saith the Lord, my people, Israelites, take away for naught. They that rule over them make them to howl. That's what they were doing in Egypt. Man, they were crying out to God. They're, they're tormenting us. Saith the Lord, my name. Continually, every day, is blasphemy. Romans chapter 2, verse 24. Even Paul says, you know, the name of God. You Jews are, are, are blasphemy. You're making a terrible name for God. That's what the Baptist church is doing today. They're making a terrible name from God. No. They just don't like the truth. Have I become your enemy because I speak the truth? Millennium. Therefore, my people, the Jews, shall know my name. And guess what name that's going to be? There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. He came unto his own, his own received them not. 
that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Therefore they shall know in that day, that's a particular expression in the Bible, in that day, pay attention to that one, that I am God, yes Moses, they're going to ask you what your name is. Tell them I am that I am sent you. There it is. Again, let me remind you that time that Jesus, uh, I believe it's John chapter 6, he says, I am. And they picked up stones and stoned Jesus. They knew exactly what Jesus was saying, even though the Jehovah Witnesses don't. When Jesus said, I am, I'm God. It's Jesus, not me. That does speak, behold, it is I. I know the Jehovah Witnesses got a time up. Now, verse 7. I hope this verse sounds familiar to you. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings and publish peace and bringeth good tidings of good that publish salvation that saith unto Zion that God reigneth. I hope you recognize because let's run over to Romans chapter 10 where Paul quotes from this verse. Romans chapter 10. And we use it for a ministry. We use it for witnessing. But the context in where it comes from is millennium. Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 15. And how should they preach except they be sent? As it's written. Here we go. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Keep your place there. Run back to Isaiah real quick. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of them that bring good tidings. Isaiah says good tidings. Paul says gospel. And bring glad tidings of good things. You know what gospel means? It means glad tidings, good news. You know what the opposite of the gospel? is? fake news is the media and your news. Now Paul is using it for witness. Going to the people and telling them about Jesus. He's speaking to the Gentiles and he's speaking to the Jews. But when we run back to Isaiah chapter 52, the context has been the millennium. What is the context? It says, saith unto Zion. You notice Paul didn't say that. Paul didn't say Zion. In the context of Isaiah 52, it's the only, and, and there, there's another place in the Bible that says the Gentiles are going to grab hold of the Jew, the Hebrew. We hear that Jesus is your God. You are the light on the mountain. Does that sound familiar? Do you know where that's coming from? The Gospel of Matthew? Take us to your God. Take us to your Jesus. Guide us in the way of Jesus in the millennium. What that verse is about is the gospel. What's the good news in the millennium? Jesus Christ is reigning on the throne of David forevermore. What is the good news uh, uh, during the church age? Jesus saves. See the salvation? Published salvation? The context is definitely about Jesus Christ. The good news that Jesus brings salvation in the church age. To those who, who, who will be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ in the millennium, there is Jesus Christ. Gospel means good news, good tidings. And the opposite of that is fake news, the media, the media outlook. Publish, publish, verse 7, salvation. You're not going to find the news agencies and the fake news in the millennium because they're going to print the truth in the millennium and you're not going to find the truth on today's news agencies. No, 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 no. The media today publishes stories to cause scare, to cause problems, to cause anything against the name of God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Not the millennium. 
not in the millennium. Verse 8, the watchmen shall lift up the voice, and the voice together shall sing. They shall sing. The millennium is going to be a time of great singing. They shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion, millennium. Verse 9. Millennium, break forth into joy. Sing together. Who? Everyone's there, the Jew and the Gentile. All centered around Jesus Christ. Try to grab any 25 Hebrews, Israelites, and it, fly over to Israel anywhere, parachute into Israel, airdrop in, grab the first 25 uh, his, his, Israelites, Hebrew. I said, "All right, we're going to sing about Jesus." <laughs> what do you think their action, reaction is going to be? It ain't going to be too good. Ye waste places of Jerusalem. Now, when Ezra and Nehemiah went back to Jerusalem, there was this waste. There was the walls were all burnt up. The river was just rubble. When Jesus Christ comes in, there is no rubble. There is no waste places. There is no destruction. I don't know how Jesus is going to build that temple, but Ezekiel says that temple is going to be built by Jesus. It says the land will be as Edom. Listen, the earth has been completely almost destroyed. One third of the trees are going to be burnt up. One third of the war is going to turn to blood. One third of this marine life is going to die. One third of the, the, the marine uh, uh, boats are going to be destroyed. And when Jesus Christ comes in, it's like what God did to Adam. We say, what did God do with Adam? All right, here's my garden. Take care of it. The curse is removed. So, when you get sleepy in the millennium, you grab yourself a wool sheet and you get yourself a fuzzle, a paramatic lion, and you get those two together, just rustle and just lean up against them and take yourself a nice good nap. For the lamb and the lion shall lay together and you lying there with them like Daniel did. The only thing that's still under the curse in the millennium is that serpent. For the Lord has comforted his people, the Jews. He has redeemed Jerusalem. We've been seeing that redeem. We've been seeing that redeem. We've been seeing that redeemer with a capital R. That is Jesus Christ. We are in the millennium. That ain't happening right now in that land. You can't say the holy city. You can't say redeem of Jerusalem when you got the dumb of the rock standing over there right now. And you got the Muslims going up and down over there. Don't call me no holy city when you got Muslims who are against Jehovah. You got Catholics against God. And you got the Arabians against the Bible over there walking around tell, telling Baptists, well, this is what Jesus did. This is where Jesus walked. Nonsense. Nonsense. Why don't you Christians wake up? You need a loud mouth preacher like me who's going to tell you the truth. You don't like it? Tough. Tell God. Get down on your knees and say, God, I don't like that style of preaching. Tell him. See what he says. I dare you. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. What's that? You guys were against my Jews. You were against my people. You're against the Hebrew light. You're against Israel. You're over here. You're a bunch of goats. You helped my people. You helped the Jews. You helped the Israelites. You helped the Hebrews. You're over here the sheep nation. You the goats, go to hell. You the sheep, come on with me to the millennium. All right, let's go to my throne. You realize that's what's going to happen when Jesus Christ comes back and we pick up those Jews? And I believe it's still a preacher, but I could be wrong. 
But when we're at that place prepared for the Hebrews, when the church is behind Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is on that horse, not only do we go into the promised land, not only do the Hebrews go into the promised land, do you know there'll be nations there that help the Jews? Give me one example. Rahab the harlot. Did she not help the Jewish? Did she not protect the two spies? She was already in the land, but still. You better read the Bible, not those veggie tales. You know what the veggie tales today is the church is a vegetarian. It's dead. It's not feeding on the bread of life. It's feeding on cartoons and little kind of good stories and movies that are lies. Turn that cart off and open and study your Bible like it says. And make sure it's a King James Bible. I know, you don't like it, tough. I do. Watch this. All the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. It doesn't say the salvation that is God. He is God. No, the salvation of our God. Who is the salvation of the Jewish God? Jehovah. But who's been the salvation all along? It's been Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ comes back the second advent, here it is. All the Jehovah Witnesses will be put to shame. All of them. All the Catholics will be put to shame. All the Arabians will be put to shame. All the Americans will be put to shame. You mean that it's not Donald Trump? You mean it's not the Pope? No, it's Jesus Christ. I rebuked a guy the other day. You know, the rebel flag of America. Rebel flag of America is Christian. Rebel flag, Christian. Christian, rebel flag. That don't make sense. Anybody rebels against Jesus Christ into the lake of fire, they go. Next, they'll have a snake that says, you know, a snake, a serpent. They'll have a snake or a serpent. On a flag that says, don't tread up upon me, 13 letters and stuff. They'll still say, you know, they don't know their Bible. Shame. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Put that on the doors of the Baptist churches. Put that door on the, on the, on the Christian cars. Put that on the, on the, on the above the doors of the front and back door of the Christian house. Put that upon the doors of the Christian business. Put that upon the heart of the Christian. Don't touch any unclean thing. Well, how do I know it's unclean? Study to show thyself approved unto God, and work with that needs not to be ashamed, rightly defining the word of truth. That's how you know. Don't believe the church. They may tell you Christmas and Easter is a church holiday. Don't believe that nonsense. Go ye out of the midst of her. You find that in the book of Revelation. I don't have that mark. But in the book of Revelation, there's a place that says come out of her. And the context is come out of Babylon. Because just before she gets clobbered, God's saying to his people, get out of there. Get out of there. And you better hope your flight is not on the Sabbath. Woe unto the women are with children, with child. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. That's the priest. That's the priest in the millennium. Under the law, I was told the other day, the law is not in the tribulation period. It's in the millennium. How do we skip? There's a temple in the tribulation. There's a temple in the millennium. The law is coming back. Pray that your flight be not on the Sabbath. I didn't study my Bible. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor by flight. For the Lord will go before you, Jesus Christ, Who's that a type? Who, who was that a type of Moses and Joshua 
You know, there's two places in, in, the, in the New Testament that should say Joshua, but it says Jesus. Interesting. You know, perverted Bibles put it back to Joshua. King James Bibles will put those two passages in Acts and in Hebrews will put Joshua's name. That's not what the Bible says. It says Jesus. That's how you check your King. Listen, your King James Bible can be wrong. And the God of Israel will be your reward. <laughs> Re reward. There's coming a time that Israel will put corporately all their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Not yet. Please read and study your Bible. Don't get upset because I preach the truth. Get in your Bible, find out what the truth is.